Welcome back, 0K fans, to Nana Lisa Dunn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury333, and now we're going to move on to some replay casts, or at least one. I might only do this one, and I haven't decided yet. Fail Thoughts versus Flipstip on Archer's Valley, which is the map we see right now. So, yeah. Just start up. So, Flipstip is going for Clickbot Factory, Fail Thoughts going for Shieldbot Factory, and I know I said about Clickbot not being super useful. I. I mean, I don't know if that's not super useful, but I've been kind of told it's not great. I don't know. Anyway, so a couple glades coming out here, a couple bandits coming out here. Kind of. Actually, wait, no. Balthos is going for. Okay, dirtbag worker bandit. All right, that's fairly typical. So flip step. Both players are going pretty typical economic start. Nothing too unusual. Flip step going a little bit more metal focused, but that's not gonna make a huge difference. Even at this skill level, they're both really high skill players, but I don't think it's gonna matter that much. But what is gonna matter, of course, is what they see of each other's base, because on Archer's Valley, I'm fairly certain you can start anywhere along the south or the north, so knowing where your opponent is makes it really easy to tell what's going on. Oh, Failthos thinks it's game? Just because they saw Cloakies? Did I? Did something happen with Cloakiebot that I missed? Because I don't recall Clokybot being instant GG material, unless they're saying Flipstep is done. I mean, Clokybot versus Shieldbot, as far as I know, is still fairly even. Unless something changed with Sharpshooters that made them have... Actually, did something did change with Sharpshooters. They do have a slightly lower reload time. That might make the standard shield ball not as effective as it used to be. Anyway, Flipstep is... Not... Not... Bearing too well in that first fight, but they are still being pretty aggressive, putting a fair amount of pressure on Feldos, keeping Feldos from thinking that they have. Well, actually, Feldos didn't look that pressured. They're trying to make Feldos feel pressured. They have glaives around the map. They're keeping units around just to make sure that Feldos doesn't feel like they can get away with anything. But Feldos doesn't seem to be actually feeling pressured. They're putting some units around. They aren't really losing anything. Flipstep is actually behind economically. They only have three metal extractors so far. But at this point, I'd say Feldos is actually a little bit ahead. Flipstip's attempts at pressure are not doing anything, and they're not expanding that quickly relative. They're going five glaives to one conjurer, whereas it looks like... How many? See, there's two, two, four bandits. Yeah, it looks like the shield factory has... Oops. Not showing me the priority. I guess the shield factory is a normal priority. Never mind, but at any rate... Ooh, fl turning around, Flipstep actually making that pressure real! Hitting all those bandits down, Glaive's now getting free reign. There's no... there's one bandit. This is the only bandit currently in play. Flipstep's pressure is now real. But they aren't actually doing anything with it. They, I guess, don't realize they just destroyed the entire force of bandits that Feltos has. Nope, leaving that metal in Feltos' territory, which... how much metal is that? 250 metal. About 250 metal in Feltos' territory, but Flipstep converting that pressure into the middle expansion. The plus four expansion in the center has been taken by Flipstep. So they have taken that advantage. Now I'm fairly certain there are... I thought there were others, but there are no other plus four expansions. So yeah, Flipstep did manage to get a bit of an economic lead. Well, okay, not lead. They got a highly overdrivable mechs, but they actually haven't overdriven it yet. Uh, anyway, Flipstep, at this point, they've got a pretty okay position. They haven't got an especially great position. Like, Felthos, I wouldn't say is that behind. They can easily just attack that center expansion. There's, yeah, two defenders and a handful of glaives. I mean, the commander being there is a big deal. Level 1 commander with light particle beam. So I wouldn't attack that. I mean, I would, personally, because I tend to be foolish like that. But Felthos wouldn't attack that. And that's... that would be wise, because there's really no reason to attack that. Belthos has nothing to really... I mean, they got a bit to gain off doing that. But at this point, they're still ahead economically. Like, despite Flipstep taking the center like that, Flipstep is behind economically. They only have 23 metal, 21... 21 to 20, 23 metal. Belthos has far more. I mean, Flipstep has the overdrive when they have the overdrive. 
That's kind of the thing. They're not able to make the overdrive really pay off. It's going to take a little while for that center expansion to pay for itself, and that's... Okay, well, Failtoss is going for it, sees the commander, pulls away, because that's the wise thing to do. Acting the commander like that would be suicidal. Entertaining, but suicidal. I mean, six... You know what? Six bandits could kill a commander. Not with this defensive support. If Flipstip moves out of position, then it's a problem. But on its own, yeah, six bandits... I mean, six glaives can kill a commander. Like, a commander... A, I think I killed a battle comm with that. Anyway, yeah, you can kill... A, a support comm can be killed at level one with a light particle beam with six bandits. It's not particularly difficult. You kind of have to concave them a bit. Like, you have to attack from kind of like this, I guess, or... Ah, how, do you, how do you draw this? Yeah, kind of like that. So that they don't... So they're all hitting at once. But otherwise, yeah, that still works. And Faelthas pushing back against Flipstip. Flipstip also accessing. Getting that plus 20... Well, plus 40 hump at this point, but... Not actually hitting the factory. Not putting any money into the factory, which... Should happen. Really, really should happen. Not sure where the builders are. Okay, there's two more glaze, then the worker... Hopefully, Flipstip realizes they're accessing and deals with that. But Felthos, two caretakers already moving into Shield Ball Tech. Snug Outlaw being built up. Bandits are still doing fine. And Felthos getting some pressure, but this shouldn't be a problem. Like, these glaives are going to die, and that's a lot. How much metal is that? 300 metal. Donation. Flipstip is being charitable today. However, Flipstep does have more map control. They have more territory. But they're not really that strong, per se. Not yet. Economically, they're still behind. Production-wise, they've just not gotten the caretakers they... Well, one of the caretakers they need, but they're still building it. So, unfortunately, some minor errors in that part, which Flipstep is the only one making. Felthos has no production problems. They're probably going to switch to a second factory soon, but I don't know. Looks like they're just more focused on getting their side of the map. Like, what they have control over, just getting it. And Flipstip's hold in the center is getting stronger. And the longer they have that, the more they can set up all the overdrive they need. And then once they get... If they get a fusion plant in their main base, then this has all the overdrive. How many... Okay, that's plus 20 energy, which I think is nearly triple. If I'm not mistaken. Could be wrong. Might be just two and a half times. But still, on plus four, that's basically, now it's a plus ten. That's not nothing. But Flipstip needs more energy to make that viable. Like I said, if they get a fusion plant, it'll be a completely different story. But Felthos still not completely set up in their territory. Neither is Flipstip, but Flipstip, though they have more territory, they... What do they have for defenses? Where's the... Okay, so they have this front section here. I got a defender up there. Their main base looks pretty reasonably defended. I mean, that center area is very well defended. But Failthos can attack from the sides, and that's exactly what they're doing. Which is working out okay. Bandits along the right side coming in, and actually much more than bandits. Yeah, here you see the Thuggalaw stuff coming up. And Flipster going for Warrior. There, okay, Failthos, I was waiting for that. There's that second factory gunship plant being built up. Still have Cloakabots here. Warrior Zeus coming up for Flipstip. Looks like they're probably going to try to go for a major assault. Probably here. I would, I would go for here-ish. They might go over here, though. I don't know if I'd agree with that. And gunship from both sides. Flipstep about to set that up. That's weird. Oh, okay. Yeah, Flipstep about to set that up. Belthos is... Attack okay, this is what I meant by it. It's not the most robust defenses, because Belthos attacking from the side... There was, like, there's a lot of defenses on the western side. There was hardly any on the eastern side. I mean, Lipstip is wide open here. Some Zeus warrior pair is coming in here to try to deal with it, but it's not doing much, and the Zeus and warriors are getting torn to shreds by the stack defenses. Not even the mobile units. Failthos ripping apart Flipstip here, and Flipstip just now finally getting enough energy for that overdrive to kick in. But even then, it's not huge. Not yet. Not like all the energy is being poured in here. How much is that? Oh, that's 20 energy. Oh, never mind. No, 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 no. It can be 20 energy. It's currently 10. That's the problem. So it's half of its capacity right now. 
Yeah, Flipstiff needs more energy to put that to work. I don't know if they're gonna go for the fusion plant though. They, I'm not. I don't really know them to go for big fusion plant type things. They're clearly going for a bigger overdrive grid. That's they want to do. Have a nice consistent overdrive grid. Not worry so much about having a huge amount of energy to power it with. The gunships are out. The gunships are they known about? I think they are. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Feltos. Oops. Feltos totally knows they're there. There's no illusions there. Feltos. And Feltos is getting a nice position here as well. I mean, they're going to be able to creep in along the western side and close Flipstep out. And now the economy's kind of turned. And this center area is so huge. There's the fusion plant, though. The fusion plant's almost done. So it'll be... It'll be a big jump for Flipstep when that's done. They sort of have, they have the production for it. They have the yeah, they have the production for it. Okay, so they can deal with that. They have the build part to deal with that. But they're going pretty heavily for air, and it looks like... How many racers are there? There are two. So it doesn't appear to be that big of a deal. Where's the other one? Oh, never mind. One of them belongs to Flipstep, so yeah. Belthos does have a bit to worry about, but they... Okay, try to interrupt. Never mind. Belthos is fine. No dedicated anti-air from the looks of it, other than other tridents for Flipstep. No dedicated ground to air. Sorry, some dedicated ground to air. Some gremlins. A few gremlins doing actually not a bad job. Not a great job. Actually, never mind. I forget any comments said about their competence. Those rapiers tore them to shreds. And yeah, there we go. There's the jump I was looking for. And now it's, well, plus nine. Close enough. I mean, that grid is just getting bigger and bigger. So at this point, it's... Yeah, that's a lot of metal being added in there. So yeah, Flipstep is basically winning at this point on Overdrive. Some Overdrive, some Reclaim. Or no, not winning, actually. Felthos still able to pull ahead. Sorry, I should say Flipstep has parity thanks to Overdrive. This center is a linchpin. I mean, Flipstep's not in a great position as it is. If Felthos destroys that, Flipstep loses. If Flipstep... If Flipstep can wipe out these defenses, though, and rush into the main base, if they take out the Caretakers, that would actually hurt a lot. I don't know if they're planning on doing that. They have much in the way of defense, or much in the way of to do that, of offensive options to do that. Those defenders are kind of scary, but not much in the main base. And actually, the eastern path is pretty open. A good air force along the eastern path, which it looks like the brawlers are trying to be, but I don't know if that'll happen. But a good air force along the eastern path should do the trick. The problem, of course, being that Flipstep is likely to attack directly if they're going to attack the main base, and they're probably not going to attack the main base. That's usually unwise. But in this case, that would probably push all that... Like, that would just make fail thoughts completely excess everything. If they wiped out these caretakers, it would be a pretty big blow. At this one, though, I expect to see some sharpshooters. And I don't. Rather surprisingly, the Felon Thug Outlaw Ball is pretty nearly built up, and I don't see any sharpshooters. This is surprising. Actually, really surprising. What the heck? What the heck is going on? Jump off factory coming in here. I'm not sure what it's doing exactly. And there's the center getting hit hard. Failed us. Basically, this is the fight they need to win. If they win this, which it looks pretty good for them, they take this out. Ooh, never mind. Being pushed back a little bit. Failed us. Not quite wanting to commit to this quite yet. Now they want to commit to it. Now they have everything in place. Got rid of that plus four. Not flips to. Nearly half lifts its economy right there. Gunship plan about to go down. The jump bot factory should probably be just cancelled. Don't even bother with that, but no, it looks like that is not going to be cancelled. And Flipstep... Ooh, bit too close to that. Bit too close to that fusion plant. That is not what you want to do. Lost a lot of the units. If Flipstep had a good set of units in the wings, but they unfortunately did not, Belthos still has a backup force, despite losing half their army right there by the fusion plant. But it looks like the back of force is not quite as powerful as it needs to be. Flipstep, this is kind of their chance, but I don't really know where they'd attack from here. Because Feltoss still has a huge amount of production. Flipstep, I mean, a lot of Feltoss' army just died. But Flipstep right now isn't really building anything that directly counters it. I mean, the warriors aren't that quick to deal with the bandits. And then, of course, there's Thugs Outlaws in there, which and the rogues as well. So it's kind of hard to really directly do anything. 
I think that window is closed at this point. I mean, Flips have had a bit of a window thanks to the fusion plant destroying most of Feldhaus's army. And Feldhaus's army at this point is 3,500 compared to like 2,580. So still not too far off. The army size is about the same, although I'm not counting flying units for that. Flying units alone actually is about 4,000 for... Oh, wait, no. I'm... Flying units alone, yeah, it's like 2,500. There's quite a bit there. And the crow coming in. Felthos going for that finishing move for the crow. Just to deal with all that because, well, why not? Really? When it comes down to it, why not? Hmm. At this point, Flipstep. What do they have up their sleeve? They gotta have something. Unfortunately, they do have excess, but that doesn't mean they have storage. Going for that jump bot factory again. What are they planning? I'm really curious about what are they planning to do with the jump bot factory? I feel like that's. I mean, I guess it could be used for pyros to wipe out the bandits, or it could be used for what for the shields, I guess. Could be used. Placeholders would actually be really useful, come to think of it. Placeholders would be awesome, because that. Placeholders are great against shield balls. Pyros are not super great against shield balls. They work okay, but they're not super great. And what else would there be? Nothing really comes to mind. That's pretty much it. But placeholders would be quite nice. And now it's up. What are they building? Serious question, what are they actually building? Did that crow die? Turned away from for one second, and it... Appears to have gone back for repairs, I have to guess. Oh, Feltos doesn't even know where their crow is. Not just me. Okay, but it looks like it probably died. Actually, that could turn... No, it flips to... Oh, yeah, it did die. Died in flips of territory, too. Missed that. Right by their commander, reclaiming that. Flipstiff getting a chance thanks to that crow death. And they are building a firewalker. Not at all what I expected. I forgot about that. The firewalker assist. Why didn't I think about that? Firewalker assist call is... Firewalker's not useless. Firewalker's awesome. That's actually a very common assist call for jump bot factory. Now, at this point, it's a bit risky to the bandits in the back of the base, but if these can be cleared out, as a way of dealing with all this stuff, all the defense, like the densely packed defense that Spellthoughts has, along with the shield ball, firewalkers are actually pretty handy. The downside being they're not necessarily the best at dealing with forces inside your base like that. They're not useless for that purpose, they're just not necessarily the best option. Okay, the Zeus is set up, so that should be okay. But still, that's a lot of damage being dealt, and while the firewalker will help against this army, ooh, not where it should have shot. It will help against that army, but it's not going to be ideal. Although it will be actually quite useful, setting a bunch of stuff on fire already without even hitting it. That was actually not as bad of a shot as I thought it was. That should help, that'll help soften up Feltas' army, but Feltas right now is triple the economy. Even with the Crow Reclaim, that's actually most of what's been holding Flipstiff together right now has been the Crow Reclaim. And even with that very generous gift, it looks like Feltas has managed to get that back. And they should have... Do they have any nearby? No, they don't. Their nearest worker is right over there. But even then, that fell apart. Flipstiff did at the center, but they weren't able to really push that into any real advantage, sadly. And also, getting that center, they did kind of sacrifice a lot of... I think, really, the biggest problem... This side of the base was undefended. Beltos pulled units right in there and smashed everything up, weakening Flipstep, forcing them to fight on multiple fronts. They, they weren't able to really hold that center as well as they would have liked. So, that's that. Hmm. Interesting match, though. Archer's Valley is not always the most interesting of maps, but that was an interesting match. Flipstep really went for that. They really wanted that center expansion. They got it, and they didn't get much else. I think that was kind of the thing. They were focused on the center expansion and holding the center expansion, but didn't really get to build up the rest of the side. Until they didn't really build it this much at all. They built it up, but they lost it very quickly. I think they just overextended. That was the big problem. They really overextended. Because Failedoss was actually ahead economically for most of the game, despite Flipstep having the center expansion. It wasn't until somewhere around the 10-ish minute mark that it started to turn, and Flipstep got the advantage, 
and then it flipped back to Peltas once they got a few more expansions up. So I would have kind of, I think Flipstep probably should have built a fusion plant far sooner, just to take advantage of this area very quickly, further in the back as well. I built it far sooner, so that the 10 or so solar plants could just focus entirely on overdrive. The fusion plant basically runs the rest of the energy needs of the base. And that's overdrive. So you have a plus 10 metal extractor in the center of the map. Every additional power plant is another bit of overdrive. And then you add this as well, and it gets even bigger. But the point is, the overdrive is hardly used, despite all the solar plants, just because there wasn't the, f the free energy to do it. Which kind of sucks. Yeah, worth noting. Put up a good fight, though. Flipster put up a good fight. Anyway, I think... See, it's 8.30. I think that's going to be it for me tonight. So, thanks for watching, and I'm glad that actually went as well as it did. Hope you enjoyed that. And in case you're wondering, that selection thing I was showing off before, which you also saw with the ally selections, I'm working on a what, couple last things. Like, it doesn't work perfectly with the default camera yet. That's a little bit low priority. It'll work probably well enough. And, like, some off-map stuff, which... Yeah, it's not a big deal for the most part. And minimap. Selecting through minimap is not something that currently handles. Once it handles that, then I'll put it up and see if I can deal with the standard camera stuff later. It basically handles the camera assuming you haven't tilted it, which is probably good enough for most people. And for those of you it's not good enough for, I will see what I can do about it. But yeah, it it's a thing. Like every other RTS game. <laughs> Pretty much. That's actually a standard feature. I'm surprised it took this long for it to be added. Anyhow. So hope you enjoyed that, and thanks for watching. Have a good night, everyone.